Thank you very much to Dr. Rachel Armstrong and her esteemed panel. Now, transporting people and goods sustainably is one of the biggest challenges we need to address. So we will explore the future of transport in these next two sessions. For the first session, I will be speaking with Josh Geigel, co-founder and chief technology officer at Virgin Hyperloop. And straight afterwards, we will hear from Tony Douglas, group CEO of Etihad Aviation Group, about the future of transport, putting aviation on a sustainable flight path. We're driven to explore, to connect, to innovate, to muster the courage to take a giant leap forward. The time has come to ask ourselves again, what is the future we want to build? All right, team, please confirm you're ready. 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 Pegasus, this is Capcom. Prepare for launching three, two, one, launch. Today, the first people traveled safely on a Hyperloop. Tomorrow, Virgin Hyperloop will change the way the world moves with an on-demand, sustainable mass transportation system that connects cities in minutes. The future of Hyperloop travel is real, and the moment is now. Well, of course, you've just seen the incredible footage from the first human test of the Hyperloop in November of last year, 2020. Uh, now, transporting people and goods sustainably is one of the biggest challenges that we need to address as a planet. So I am really pleased to have one of the stars of the video uh, with me here today, Josh Geigel, co-founder and chief technology officer for Virgin Hyperloop, who aims to revolutionize how we all get around. Josh, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Omar, for having me. So I think the first question on everyone's mind, of course, having just seen that video is, what was that experience like? You're traveling 100 miles per hour, 172 kilometers per hour, uh, pretty incredible speed. Yeah, it was surreal. You know, I started the company six years ago in a garage and all of the technology development, everything we had to do to, to get there was exciting even before we actually went down the tube. And this idea of actually being able to sit in a dream, in an idea, and show that this technology was was safe. It was one thing to like ride it, but the thing that we really wanted to show was two people get on and two people get off, that the system is safe, that we did it the right way, that we've allowed and developed a piece of technology that can be safe, not for astronauts, but for everyday people like Sara, myself, and the goal of like faster, cleaner, safer transportation, like right here on Earth, that's what we were able to show uh, first time just a couple of months ago, so. Um, so how comfortable would you say it was at this stage? Obviously, it's the first time you had, you know, um, humans riding this thing, and uh, eventually you're hoping to get up to almost a thousand kilometers per hour, around 600 miles per hour, I believe. Uh, do you also think that's something you can do with people in, in, in those capsules? Yes, I, I definitely think. We travel at those speeds when we're in aircraft today, and now we're just doing it a couple of feet off the ground, a couple of meters off the ground, and, it's, uh, it was smooth. It was smoother than uh, all the test data that I've stared at for the last couple of years would, would kind of allude to. It was also um, it was also kind of surreal, this like feeling of really being transported into the future, almost literally. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, I know I certainly uh, am excited for, for the day when we can all give it a shot. It looked like a real rush. Um, of course, this is Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, so I wanted to turn our uh, sort of attention towards uh, climate change, something which is at the forefront, I think, of everyone's minds. Uh, so looking at the Hyperloop as a technology, how do you envision it will contribute uh, towards creating more sustainable mass transportation? The opportunity that is a Hyperloop is, is something that's, you know, I believe in at its core, right? As an engineer, we have the ability to let people live the way they want to live, work where they want to work, but also do it responsibly, sustainably. And so our system is fully electric. It has no direct emissions, particularly in the Middle East, it can be powered by the sun. Um, and the area that we're looking at is we have magnetic levitation, electromagnetic propulsion, clean, contactless, and it's using about 10 times less energy than an aircraft 
going at those same speeds. Um, so you're able to go and have a convenience that people want, that they like of the aircraft without all of the pollution that they, they might have. Um, and that, that gives us the ability to move large amounts of people electrically, sustainably. And you could imagine when, you, when we talk about a connected gulf, when we talk about the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we talk about the Emirates and moving into Kuwait, Bahrain, the whole thing, there is an opportunity for us to really take all of that automotive, all of the trucking pollution, all of that off the road or out of the air, off the road and into a hyperloop. So I guess picking up on what you're saying there about the, the GCC, uh, certainly it makes sense, I think, uh, from transporting goods, uh, you know, um, cargo, that sort of thing. Uh, what, what impact do you believe this will have for the GCC then? Uh, is this something where we could look at it um, maybe in the next 10, 20 years, becoming one of our primary modes of transportation? Um, what's the plan, do you think, for this region? I think uh, one of, I just had a, a son uh, two years ago, and my goal will be someday to, for him to ask me, how did you get around before Hyperloop, <laughs> right? And, and so what we see in the 2020s, now that we've, we've entered, really officially kind of entered this decade, is the, the opportunity for this to be the decade of Hyperloop, the opportunity for this to be, you know, you know, we've heard an electrification decade, but this is also the opportunity for us to certify the technology, for us to begin to build uh, operating routes around the world. And so what we've, what we've seen in the last two years is regulators around the world really starting to gravitate towards um, what Hyperloop could be. They're seeing the progress that we're making with the technology uh, here in the United States, but the regulators in uh, the Middle East, in India, in, in the US, in Europe are all I'll say galvanized and excited, particularly since we did this test. The fact that we followed the processes that we had followed to do certification, all of that I think gives us the ability to leverage those learnings as we go forward. And our goal is by 2025 to have a certified product and that we're working on with the regulators around the world to be able to do that. Meaning that that's sort of the moment where it becomes mass adoptable. And that's the part that I'm actually looking forward to the most because that's really what says, okay, so now we have something that's cleaner, we have something that's faster, we have something that's meeting the needs of the 21st century with actually a 21st century technology. And that can give way to, I'll say, an infrastructure, and particularly in the Gulf. And that's really where the excitement for me lies because you look at that region, there's a growing young population. There's a desire for connectivity. There's not, <clears throat> there's not these forms of kind of mass connectivity yet. And so this is where we see the, the potential to really exist. So, you know, from Riyadh to Jeddah inside the kingdom, something in like 46 minutes, from Abu Dhabi to Dubai in, in 12, and you look at like Riyadh to Dimam, you could do that in about half an hour. And this idea of being able to be anywhere within the Gulf um, in a very short period of time um, both for cargo, both for passengers, is something that I think really enables a different type of connectivity, a different type of ability to go see each other, work in one area, live in another, visit one area. And that's, I think, something like really, really exciting. And so the support that we've seen from the governments in the Middle East, um, the excitement around the technology, that is really something that's just like, you know, insanely exciting. And the uh, the part that is kind of hidden in this is that this isn't, you know, something that the the region invests in, but it happens somewhere else. Or this isn't something that doesn't improve the wider economy, improve the wider benefits for all of the, the citizens within the region. And so we see the ability to increase the, the GDP from reduction in oil exports um, and the ability to create new jobs associated with the construction, the operation of this new type of system. Um, but really this idea of a larger you know, benefits to, to the greater society. And, and in the US, for example, for every dollar you spend on infrastructure, you create about $4 of economic growth. Um, so think about you know, what a Roman road did, what a Spanish ship did. You know, think about what a, a, a GCC Hyperloop will do. And that's the part that I think, uh, I mean, it gets me excited. I mean, I get to wake up every morning working on a piece of technology that could transform the way a, a, a region moves. And that's uh, tremendously exciting. 
Well, you certainly got me excited. Uh, the 12 minutes from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, I'm particularly excited about. I, I hope to see that uh, pretty soon. Uh, so you mentioned, obviously, that you're working towards that safety certification for 2025. Um, what are the major challenges there? What are the hurdles you guys have to go through to get to that? And then do you think we will see commercialization in this decade? So the challenges that we have are we are not a we're not a plane, we're not a boat, we're not a car, you know. And so how do you regulate something that really hasn't existed before? So you need to be progressive. You need to understand that you can't solve these safety challenges the same way, you know, a train does, right? Like a train, if it gets into trouble, it has to grab its brakes, you know, on its on spinning wheels. Well, we don't have any spinning wheels, so we don't have those type of brakes. So we have a different type of break um, and showing that that system is safe. And, and the nice thing about our system is that it's like fully electric, meaning that there's very, very, very few moving parts, like really only the doors. And that gives us the ability to do things, I think, quite a bit simpler, quite a bit more redundantly. And the, the challenges associated with you know, getting this moving forward is really that buy-in. Do we have, have we found the right group of of progressive type of regulators to leverage the best of what's out there, but also to know that we have to create some new things to, to actually make this possible. Um, I think it's imminently doable. I think we're seeing, you know, in the in inside the Emirates, inside, you know, we're seeing electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. We're seeing progress on drones. We're seeing progress on different types of vehicles, self-driving cars and the like. And this is moving towards that type of, of future. And so I think it's certainly possible. Um, I think we're, we're trying to identify and trying to find the right types of groups. Like, you know, should we use more people from rail? Should we use more people from air? Um, and that's the idea of, of what we have to do. But I am, I am certainly very, very optimistic that there will be more than just one Hyperloop you can ride by the end of the decade. Okay, that's, I mean, certainly exciting news. Um, so I guess uh, sort of last question, and then you mentioned obviously your son, you want to get to a point where he's talking about our current modes of transportation is maybe a thing of the past. Um, you know, what's the dream, the aspiration for when you think Hyperloop could be, will be the primary form of transport? I think you look, uh, there's a good example in the United States from 1860 to 1890, really the, the railroad took over. And you saw in about a 30 year time frame, you went from, you know, a couple of miles of road to tens of thousands of miles of, of railroad, I should say. And I think our time will be shorter because we can build things faster, you know, through automation, through a number of these other other technology advancements. Um, I really think the power of Hyperloop comes in the network. So when you're connecting more than just two places, the ability for us to go at speed and have no moving parts in the track and all these these fun pieces of technology. But I really feel that over the next 20 years is this will be the, the, the decade of Hyperloop where the first projects are coming out and those first, you know, incept, incepted pro projects, those ones that are the, you know, the Abu Dhabi to Dubai or whatever it might be, then you start to see the connected network, you know, in the 2030s that are based on this decade of really laying that foundational piece. And uh, so I think it's really going to be in the next 20 years that you're going to see a massive transformation. And that that should line up very nicely. My son would be 22 uh, by that point. And uh, then he could say, I don't know how you got around before I did it. Well, I, I'm certainly, uh, I could share your enthusiasm. It sounds fantastic to me. Um, well, what do you think we'll all be calling it at that point? I mean, we obviously are flying, driving, is it looping? What, what's 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 the verb? Lo looping is a good verb. Um, it's shorter. It's not hyper looping. It's just looping. Hey, I'll, I'll loop. I'll loop to see you. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like that. There you yeah. Go. If, if, if that takes off, then just just give me a little mention. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, well, Josh, of course, we have Josh Geigel, co-founder and chief technology officer at Virgin Hyperloop. What a pleasure. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys do. Looking forward to this transportation revolution in the next decade. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ryan.